Hi, so in video 1274, we made this. It's a large Peltier device, so there are 10 Peltiers in there, steel plate, and then an aluminium heat sink that I got from a UPS. And I made that and I ran that on various chemicals using the heat of reaction to generate electricity directly. Now, I can be worse than useless when it comes to emails. I get so many that I pile through them until I get really fed up, and then I'll leave them and come back to them later. And it can create a bit of a backlog, to be honest. So, once I'd made this, I read this email from a friend of mine, Ian Burton, suggesting I do exactly the same thing. So, I was really mortified, hey? Because um, this is not my idea. This is Ian's idea. Now, Ian suggested we build a large Peltier. And what we do with it is scavenge heat from the room. Certainly in the UK, and certainly in lots of places, we have our radiators. These radiators are driven by central heating, which is a boiler. And so there's a lot of waste heat that comes off of those. And his suggestion was to use a large Peltier device and stick it on a radiator, and you should be able to generate from it. Now, Ian tells me he was able to generate a string of five LEDs with sufficient light to light up his room. And I thought that was an awesome idea. He also asked if I would share it. So I'm sharing Ian's idea here. It's not my idea. It's Ian's. Now, I don't have a radiator that I can put on camera, but I do have this. It's an oil-filled radiator. Now, obviously, I'm going to plug this in to generate heat, and it seems a bit silly plugging something in so that you can get something out of the electricity supply. But you've got to remember, Ian's idea is to strap this onto a gas-fired water uh, central heating boiler system. So we're scavenging waste heat in Ian's idea. I'm just demonstrating it with an oil-filled heater, which is not necessarily the same thing, okay? So I've taken the trouble of swapping all these around so that the aluminium will fit in there like that. And that creates me, without much effort, my attachment unit where I'm gonna generate some electricity. So I'm gonna set this up and then we'll have a look at it then. I've just wired them up in parallel, so I've collected all the reds and all the blacks together, put them onto the meter, and the meter goes to this little motor here, which is my load, and now if I turn this on, obviously that's gonna get hot, which will heat the aluminium, and this plate here should create a cold side, and this should create a hot side, and we should be able to scavenge some heat from that. So let's plug that in and give it a few moments to warm up. It's kind of neat to watch that voltage creep up, actually. When it gets to about 78, 80, somewhere around about that, little flip and the motor will turn because now we're generating enough to be able to turn it. Now Ian tells me that there's a bit of a problem with this in that the heat travels through here to this outside plate relatively quickly and of course these Peltier devices work from heat difference so the hotter this side and the colder this side they'll generate far more and what he did was use some of this XX energy with a fan to blow air on it and you actually got more generation. But then I thought about this thing that was popular in the 70s and the 80s because, of course, air conditioning and central heating creates very dry air. What people were doing was sticking a bowl of water on top of their radiators to humidify the air. But, of course, when you heat water and it evaporates, you get a cooling. This is the heat of evaporation. And, of course, we have this stuff, which is pretty awesome stuff. It's Oasis. It's meant to take a whole load of water. It's volume for volume. It's incredible how much water this will actually hold. Now, the sharp-eyed amongst you will have noticed these. These aren't holding this on. These are just here to hold this on. This is held by itself, jammed in the radiator. So if we put a little shelf on there, stick our Oasis on, What we've now got is evaporative cooling, and you can see this has jumped up amazingly. So as that steel plate heats, so as this gets hotter, the steel plate will begin to get a little bit warmer, but it's against this water, and so now that water will evaporate from the oasis, doing that, maintaining that side, and humidifying your air. Anyway, there it is, belting along at quarter of a volt. Remember, it's 100 millivolts before we added the evaporative cooling. So, 
Um, adding this obviously makes a big difference. Now this is just a quick prototype, type, a quick test of the idea. I'm sure there's a lot better ways of arranging this than the way I've arranged it. For example, slots in the foam would really work because we get fins to help that cooling process go on. Now, I love the Ian's idea of scavenging the heat and also maintaining that temperature difference between the hot and the cold, the evaporative cooling to help that. And that evaporative cooling makes me think of maybe a solar application. Shine the sun on it, and of course you're going to get evaporative cooling. So I thought they were great ideas, actually. Thank you very much for uh, sending them in, Ian. Now, he sent them in as a suggestion for the competition. He didn't want to take part in the competition, but he did want to suggest the idea. Brilliant idea. Remember the competition closes in 13 days. Anyway, I hope you like the ideas. I hope there's something you can do with them. And thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. That's awesome.